Many Americans are still pretty blind to the end game of these fiscal policies and the US dollar. Plenty still advocating for the $2,000 stimulus check, plenty advocate for socialism, plenty are unwilling to admit to these things having long-term dire consequences unfortunately. I wish you were right, and I wish at least 20% of the nation understood, that might be enough to push some change, but I think it's at 2-5%. Money always seeks the greatest utility possible. In the past, that meant money was invested in building businesses that yielded profits. Today, it means playing in the rigged casino. Just because all the businesses have been shuttered, doesn't mean the economy has disappeared. It has simply moved to a different plane. The fact that 6.8 billion people do not participate in the stock economy is irrelevant, the rigged casino is where the bulk of resources are deployed and the plebes can only be thrown a crumb from the gambling table from time to time. Uncle Sugar has no intention of stopping. As long as the testing continues, the lockdowns, checks, and stimulus continues. But not forever, it looks like we are going to get $600 stimulus payments from the federal government after all. Oh goody. For the millions of Americans that are on the brink of being evicted from their homes, that will be enough for about half a mortgage payment or about half a month of rent. Many are referring to this as America's, let them eat cake moment, and that probably is not too far off target. As our politicians spend hundreds of billions of dollars on other nonsense, we are supposed to be deeply grateful to them for tossing a few hundred bucks our way. But the truth is that $600 does not go as far as it once did. 20 years ago, it would have bought more groceries than any of us could have possibly put into a single vehicle, but today it will buy about two carts of food and maybe a tank of gas. If we are going to go, full Weimar, and destroy any hope of ever getting our national finances under control, we might as well make the checks big enough to smile about. But while you get a measly $600, the federal government is spending $6,900,000 on a smart toilet, which can actually recognize a user's anal print. In his latest report on federal government waste, a project he completes every year, Senator Rand Paul R. Key, highlights $54.7 billion in government spending that he deems wasteful. Among the items noted this year is the creation of a $6.9 million smart toilet, which operates with three cameras, one of which can identify a user's anal print. As explained in the Festivus Report 2020, researchers at Stanford University used $6,973,057 in funds granted through the National Cancer Institute, which is part of the National Institutes of Health NIH, to create a so-called smart toilet. Really? Just when I think that it can't possibly get any worse, the federal government comes up with even more bizarre ways to waste our tax dollars. At least if we were only spending what we brought in I could live with that. But instead, we have been stealing more than $100 million from future generations of Americans every single hour of every single day ever since Barack Obama first entered the White House. I am not just picking on the Democrats. At this point most Republicans have abandoned any pretense of fiscal responsibility, and that fact makes me sick to my stomach. Today, we are $27.5 trillion in debt, and soon it will be $30 trillion. If we are going to liquidate the nation anyway, let's give people checks that are so large that they will be dancing in the streets. Because giving people $600 checks in this economic environment is essentially the equivalent of spitting into Niagara Falls. Let me try to illustrate what I am talking about. Right now, there are 12 million US renters that are more than $5,000 behind on their rent and utilities. The newest data from Moody's Analytics shows about 12 million renters are now at least $5,850 behind in rent and utilities payments, and eviction protections expire in weeks. Okay, so let's assume that all of those people get $600 payments on a timely basis. In the end, on average they will still be about $5,000 behind on their payments, and the start of a new month is right around the corner. And there are millions of other Americans that are living so close to the edge financially that they have been putting their rent payments on a credit card. There's been as much as a 70% increase from last year in people paying rent on a credit card, according to an analysis by the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia. If you're putting your rent payments onto a credit card, that shows you're really at risk of eviction, says Seamus Roller, executive director of the nonprofit National Housing Law Project. That means you've run out of savings, you've probably run out of calls to family members to get them to loan you money. 
Yes, $600 will help. But not much. For 32-year-old Joe Marie Hernandez, $600 might buy a little bit of time, but what she really needs is a new job. Joe Marie Hernandez doesn't know how she and her four-year-old daughter will survive after her unemployment aid lapsed this weekend. Hernandez, who lives in Olean, New York, is on the brink of losing her home in days after she lost her job as a customer service associate at a gas station in the spring. Enduring prolonged unemployment, she struggled to make ends meet and has nothing left in savings to keep her afloat. I can't even imagine the emotional pain that she must be going through right now. When you have a young child and you are about to be thrown out into the streets, nothing else really matters. I only have $100 left to my name. My whole world is shattered, says Hernandez, 32, who was forced to put her car up for sale. We can't wait a few weeks for help. We're starving and we'll be out on the street soon. Sadly, there are millions and millions of other Americans that are facing similar scenarios right now. This is what an economic depression looks like, and economic conditions are going to continue to deteriorate moving forward. Many on the left are assuming that future stimulus checks will be bigger once Joe Biden gets into the White House. But every additional dollar that we borrow makes our long-term problems even worse. With near zero yields on savings, treasuries, bonds, the only game in town is equities. How many will, when the dust settles and reality sets in, reduce their dividends? It is not the loss in stock price, but the expected income that will be most harmful. I am hearing the Social Security Administration will, given current projections, be forced to reduce benefits in 2029 and not 2035 as once projected. Now, that will hurt most. Bottom line, our self-serving, special interest-owned and operated Congress must start taking responsibility and addressing all our long-neglected problems, i.e., entitlements, healthcare, education, infrastructure, immigration, poverty, drugs, using our military as a global police force, etc. Our national debt continues to spiral wildly out of control, the money supply is shooting up at an exponential rate, and we are mired in the worst economic downturn since the Great Depression of the 1930s despite unprecedented government intervention. This is the big meltdown that everyone has been waiting for, and we are still only in the very early chapters. So no, $600 stimulus payments won't actually fix anything. But hopefully they will ease the suffering slightly as the US economy continues to relentlessly steamroll toward oblivion. Because the collapse is a mechanism of strategically depriving you of any resources that would allow you to otherwise a. Sustain yourself b. Network and trade with others c. Resist being controlled The end goal is your complete dependence on one or two nodes in the system. The collapse is not a negative for those who are engineering it. The collapse will be what is necessary once all tools of control and surveillance are in place, the final loss of any self-sustaining resources you might have had. To get an idea, look at Amazon right now. While 90% of the economy groans and shrivels, corporations like Amazon are left to be the only game in town for many regions, using the regional dependency on them as leverage to exert control. These corporations also possess all of the assets needed to ingest what the little guy lost in the collapse, i.e. buy up Main Street infrastructure for a song. The dollar is rarely destroyed, it simply changes hands, goes from bottom to top. In the end, you're only supposed to be able to work for a Bezos, Zuckerberg, Gates etc. company. You'll need the wage they pay you, the power they provide to you, the land they own, the food they deliver and probably the water they filter. You'll also need their schools and pharmaceuticals. Bezos is already getting the latter started. As more and more schooling goes online, it wouldn't surprise me if they also began ingesting education infrastructure fairly soon. 600 stimulus checks won't pull America out of this mess, but I suppose a $1.4 trillion appropriations package which was full of pork. Handouts include billions in foreign aid, $10 million for Pakistani gender programs, missile procurement, and a plethora of other items which don't benefit the general American public will. There sure is a lot of distraction from where government is really wasting money. The US is going downhill fast. This was the Nomad Economist. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box.
You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.